So today on this beginner series for Final Cut Pro X version 10.3, I'm just going to describe to you how to set up an event and a project on Final Cut Pro. So over here, this is our new um, demo library which I created in the previous video. And we now want to show you how to create additional events. By default, when the library is first created, you have one single event that appears. It's a single star with a single square, a uh, single square with a single star in it. Um, and it usually has the date that it was created. Uh, there's no project that resides within that. It gives you the option to immediately import import your, your media. And you can also see, see here that there's no timeline. It's saying new projects. It's here that if you want to create a, a new project down here. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So the first indication is to click on the library that you want to import it into. Now the reason I'm giving this additional step is because I work with a lot of people in shared labs and shared computers and you don't always want, um, you want to make sure that you're importing it into the correct library and that it's not into someone else's. So selecting the library first of all by going up here to where it says file, down here to where it says new and over here to where it says event. And this is a new folder that we're creating. Our events are folders. You can also see here, over at the side, any of these symbols here, these are our keyboard shortcuts. So if you want to um, create a new event, another way of doing that is to hit the Alt or Option key with the letter N. So I'm going to do this twice so you can see. So this, first of all, File, New Event. Um, the event name, so I'm going to give it a name, so let's just see. I'm going to, I'm going to import some footage from a, uh, from a festival uh, to play with there. Um, so I'm going to call it Festival, I'm making sure it's in the right library, and I do want to create a new project. Now the projects here, these are our timelines. If I deselected that, all that would do would create a new event similar to this one that's got, that has nothing in it at the moment, that doesn't have a project that you would just be using to import your files, which is one um, thing that you might want your, uh, your events for. However, I do want to create a new project in addition to this. So these here, you get a couple of options. These are our custom settings. Down at the bottom here on the left hand side, if this is clicked, these would all disappear and these would be your custom settings um, for your project. So the, the default custom settings are that the, the videos are set by the first video clip properties. So what that means is that the first piece of video that you click and drag and drop onto your timeline when you create it, um, that tells Final Cut Pro what your video settings are. So it will read the clip essentially and decide that it's um, you know it's 1080, it's 25p, it's standard, that's what a lot of videos are these days. Um, However, it might not recognize the video, or maybe, for example, if you're working in a, on like a compilation or a showreel or something which contains video properties from a number of different sources, um, or if you are, have videos that include things like images and photos, if you drag one of those onto the timeline, it's going to ask you, what are your settings? And if it doesn't quite understand what, what you've placed into the timeline. Um, if you have one video out of a selection that's, that's of a lower quality and that's the first clip that you drag on, then it's going to tell, that, that it's going to sort of downgrade the quality of all of the rest of your videos. So it's just something to be aware of. But if your videos are, have been shot on a single device, on a single camera, or you pretty much know what your settings are supposed to be, then it's not a bad way to go. Your starting time code just means that, that it starts counting up from zero, which is absolutely fine, and your um, audio settings are fairly standard. So if I click OK, and I've now got this new untitled project and you can see here that this has all changed. I've now got this slightly darker line here in the middle and I've got untitled project is now appearing here. So that's how you create a project within a folder. So I'm just going to do this one more time. So we've got up here to new events. So we've got here, this is our keyboard shortcut which is either Alt or Option N. So I'm just going to do that here, Option N. It's going to open up exactly the same, um, same window. So I'm going to create a different one this time. <laughs> and I'm going to call it Arial. I have a few different folders here. Um, and I'm going to create a new project. I'm going to show you the custom settings this time. So if I click on Use Custom Settings, this is where you can be more specific as to the particular dimensions of the shape of the frame that you want to work with. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm not quite in 4K territory right now. So I'm going to choose... So you, you can click on the first the first option here. You got, uh, This is kind of like the, the size, basically, of the... <coughs> Excuse me. This is the size of the of the frame and the dimensions of the frame that you want to work with. So 1080p, for example, is um, it's kind of fairly standard. It's, it's your the aspect ratio um, 1920 by 1080. Um, P for progressive, I for interlaced. 720 is going to be a bit smaller. NTSC standard definition. They're quite small uh, frames, and they were sort of previous old school TV, old school DVDs. Oh, I want to select it. 
2K, 4K, large, uh, 5K, all that are quite large uh, settings. Other, you see particular options, these are sort of standard definition rates. And then you've also got the option of custom. Now custom is where you can be quite specific. You might want to choose maybe some, I don't know, some widescreen settings. If you want to be unusual, make like a square video for Instagram. Maybe that's where you could, might type in 1080 by 1080, for example. Um, and then you've got your frame rate. If you know it off your, off your camera that you're using for particular frame rates, you can choose which frame rate you want to, you want to assign in relation to your video. So I might choose 25p. This is kind of just one of the more optimal settings for Final Cut Pro. It likes to, to render it in, um, in Apple ProRes. It, it makes it function efficiently on, on Final Cut. And um, yeah, if you want to make adjustments to your color spaces, NTSC is uh, American. Uh, well, it's a lot of different countries, but on standard it's, it's uh, largely American. PAL is largely European. So we're just kind of going to work for those for the moment. Um, and if you care to make adjustments to your, to your audio sample rates, you can make those adjustments there. So I'm just going to click on this. I'm going to create a square frame for the moment just to kind of show you what that does. And I'm going to click OK. So you can see here this just has just changed. So my previous project, if I go up to the library and I can look at the two that I have, my first untitled project is a square. My second untitled project is a standard 16 by 9 uh, 1080 aspect ratio. So that's where the, the kind of fun of these things can start to come into play. Um, so that's how to create uh, an event, and that's also how to create a project. Also, once you have your project already set, um, if you later decide that you want to change the aspect ratio uh, for a particular reason, um, you can modify those by going up here to where it says Window, then to Project Properties, and then within that you can, you've got the option here to Modify. If you click on Modify, you can then change the aspect ratio. You might go back to, let's do Custom actually, and let's do 1920 by 800. Let's make it widescreen. Go back to 25p and click OK. Now I've got a more widescreen style video. So you can you can alter the the dimensions of the project at any time, even even if you don't make those um, those choices at the beginning. So that is how to create uh, uh, an event, which is a folder that exists within our library, and also how to create a project. Now just briefly as well, I'm just going to show you. You don't have the projects themselves. Um, they reside within within folders, but they, they don't have to stay in the folder that you've given it initially. So I have put these all together. So I might create let's create a new a new folder actually, a new event. And I'm going to say project folder. So I might want a folder that just contains my projects. And then within that, I've got a new one that I just uh, created by default. But I might want to take these projects and place them within my project folder. And I've got three in here. So they don't have to stay um, in the folder that you you brought it into, you can you can move them around, um, just so you know you have the option available to you, or you can just pop them back where they were. Cool. So that's us for today. Thanks.